Hey there guys and gals, my name is Luke, this is the Outdoor Gear Review, and this is a random lunch and chat episode. I'm out here filming at Lone Wolf Mountain, and it is so hot. <laughs> it is incredibly hot. This is July weather in June. I'd say the temperature right now is around 76 degrees, and I'm sweating. I have been sweating, that's for sure. I just got done setting up the Big Agnes Slater Ultralight 2 Plus tent. First time that's going into rotation here. We are going to begin testing that out. Very, very cool tent. It's a combination of a three season and a fourth season tent. It is made to like trap in air so you can stay warmer. Pretty interesting, very ultra light, less than three pounds. So to start off folks, what is new with you all? What is happening in your lives? What sort of adventures have you been going on? What sort of new gear have you gotten? As for myself, I've been staying busy. Oh, it's getting into late spring now, so things are definitely growing. Lots of mowing here at Lone Wolf Mountain, and of course back at home. Home is roughly an hour away, it's about 50 miles. Now that it's warming up, I'm painting the house, it's been about 10 years. I've been doing some improvements on the inside as well, so I've definitely been staying busy. Uh, of course, when it comes to the channel, lots and lots of adventures. You guys just saw the uh, road trip to Peaks of Otter. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Coming up on Friday, we have the Sharp Top Mountain Day Hike with the crashed World War II bomber. Very, very cool hike. I hope you guys enjoy that as well. After that, we will have the next Military Surplus Overnight Adventure, which features Moose. Moose is right over here. Oh yeah. I do have to get Moose into the shop though. She's leaking some oil from something I don't even know what it is, so. <laughs> I need a buddy who's a mechanic. Do you guys want to be my buddy? Who wants to help me out? Anyways, lots and lots of adventures coming up. After that, we will begin the viewer's choice where you guys get to select the adventure that we go on, select the gear, the location, all of that good stuff. I always enjoyed doing that in the past, allowing you guys to select the gear and the location and so on. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, that's coming up. As far as, like, upcoming trips go there's a lot in the works in june susan and i will be heading out to colorado to do some hiking with that trip we will be out there for about a week and our plan is to do one overnight adventure and a number of day hikes we really want to spend our time wisely and hit up as many locations as possible during that week that is going to be awesome very very awesome after that in july the second week of july ira and i are hitting up another cross-country trip that's right it is time to do that again oh yes oh yeah mm -mm -mm. susie makes a mean sandwich thanks love with that road trip we are going to have a blast and our main focus is the northern part of the country we're gonna hit up like north dakota montana washington head out to the coast on the west Woo! it is going to be great i'm really looking forward to it i really am now we learned quite a bit from our previous road trip um we, we are going to take more time we are going to get out of the car and actually explore we're going to hit up some different restaurants we're going to maybe do some hiking trails but i don't know the truth is this is my brother's trip every single year i tag along i put in my two cents that's about it <laughs> He's definitely the captain, I'm the navigator, and I'm just making sure that he just he doesn't get murdered while being out there driving across the country by himself. Some people do it, but I'd feel better with me being at his side. So, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So as you can see right there, we have a lot of stuff coming up. Oh, also, there will be another creeper walk this year. 34 miles, fast, quick, 12 hours. That's a lot of fun. It's, a, it's also extremely difficult. Uh, I've been letting my knee rest here. Um, as you guys saw in a previous overnight trip, I did injure it. And this has been something that's taken maybe four months to heal. Um, even with the sharp top adventure, which you guys will see on Friday, I was fine hiking up, but I was hobbling, barely able to walk by the time I got down. So it's been a while since we filmed that. Uh, my knee's getting better, been doing some hiking, everything seems fine, just going nice and slow. So I'm going to give it another couple months, and then it's time for the creeper walk. 34 miles, 12 hours. 
Oh yes. <laughs> Gosh, that trip. That is a walk. All right, that is a walk. I don't know if Ira will join me on that trip or not. I'm not sure. Ira does not like the camera. He, he doesn't feel comfortable being filmed, so he does the road trip across the country, and that's about it. It's understandable, right? Now, folks, I do have a Facebook page, so make sure to go check that out. You will find a link in the description box down below. Moments ago, I posted a picture, and I asked you all if you had any questions, because I'm going to answer five questions in this video from Facebook. Let's start with question number one. So many questions already. Lots and lots of questions. Can only do five. So Nicola asks, have I ever been lost while hiking? And yes, I have. One time it happened. I was out in the Pisgah National Forest and I was doing some photography of some waterfalls in that area. And I was on this trail. It was early spring and it was pretty much after we had like an ice storm and it just toppled trees. There were limbs down everywhere. And so I went out hiking on this trail. I found the waterfall. I mean, it was awesome. You know, it was a beautiful place. Got some great photos. And, you know, I pack up my gear and turn around. And I mean, it's the darndest thing. I could not find where the trail was. I'd walk a little bit this way, didn't see it. Walk this direction, still didn't see it. And of course, your first reaction is you're scared, right? You're nervous because it's such a big ordeal. I mean, if you're on a hiking trail in town, it's not that big of a deal. But when you're out in the middle of nowhere, it's a big deal. The Pisgah National Forest is 500,000 acres of pristine, untouched land. So you get lost, you're lost. There's nothing around you, right? You're not going to come across a house out there. There's absolutely nothing. The reason I bring this up is because a viewer, he actually contacted me and said that essentially the same thing happened to him and his wife. They were out looking at some waterfalls got lost. And I had mentioned it in a previous overnight trip, just how easy it is to get lost when you go off trail, right? I mean, you could walk 10 feet from the trail, turn around, and it disappears. It, it is how it is. It's that simple. It happened to me. It happened to him. You know, the thing is, like, when as soon as you realize that you're lost, stop. Take a break, right? Start thinking things out. You definitely do not want to run off thinking that you're going to find a trail in one direction because you can be completely wrong. You have some decisions to make and it's best not to make rash decisions. When your adrenaline's going, you're not thinking straight, you're not thinking clearly, take a knee, think it out, right? Plan your next steps very, very wisely. For myself, what I did, I had my map, of course. I knew exactly where the waterfall was. I just could not find that trail. I mean, it was just so covered up with debris, I just couldn't find it. So with the use of the compass and my map, I climbed up through the woods alongside of the waterfall. And essentially, I just followed the water for a while and kind of branched off and came out onto the road, found my vehicle. Thank God. But yeah, I mean, it, it's that easy, folks. It really is. So you really have to be careful. You know, if you're on a hiking trail and you get lost, hopefully, hopefully, you, you know, just stepped off the trail, you're within, you know, a short distance of that trail. If that's the case, it's easy to find. What I recommend is that you start where you're at, right? And you branch out. You go out in directions, all directions, to see if you can't find that trail again. You do need to mark it so you can make your way back to that point. Because where you got lost at, that's the closest point to the trail, right? Make sure to mark your trail, mark your path so you can make it back to where you were so you can continue to branch out. Most people are found right next to the trail. I mean, it happens all the time when people get lost. So definitely something to keep in mind. Hopefully that will never happen to you all. Do not go off trail. That, that's my best advice. I tell people that all the time. Uh, it, it's easy enough to go off trail to go pee and then get lost. It's that simple. Uh, there was a hiker on the Appalachian Trail. She was missing for a long time, but they just found her body. She had actually written a journal. I think she said that she went off trail to go to pee, got lost, and she perished in the woods. It's that simple. So fantastic question, by the way. Okay, so I wrote down a couple things here that I wanted to talk with you all about. I wanted to give you all an update on a couple of reviews and products that we've taken a look at. People ask about the Outback Swags Pioneer Tent, right? The Aussie Tent. I have never heard back from that company. They never once responded to any of my emails about doing a follow-up, about what the issues were with that tent. Um, they did not want it back, apparently. I ended up selling that to a viewer. 
for a huge discount. Hope you enjoy it. They live in a very dry area, very dry climate, so it works perfectly for them, whereas it does not work very well for me. So, yeah, what a shame. That was, that was really an interesting situation. I'm surprised that they never wrote me back, right? Okay, the next product I want to talk about is the Crew Outdoors Insulated Tent. You guys saw that in the surprise overnight adventure, the Spring Storms video. That was a great adventure. I think you guys really enjoyed it. The comments were great. Everybody seemed to enjoy it and had a good time. Thank you very much. I'm glad you guys like it. Um, that tent was very, very interesting. It's so big. It's so heavy. Insulated tent. Uh, there were a few issues. One issue was the label on the inside that talked about suffocation. It said not to seal that thing up completely. I asked the company about this and it turns out that they had basically gotten that label from another tent and just used it with that tent. It was like a very generic label, right? So it didn't apply to that tent at all. Uh, another issue was that you couldn't seal that tent up so that it was 100% bug free. That is an issue that they're going to address with the next version of the tent, so thumbs up. Now when it comes to the actual insulation part, right, the added warmth to the tent, let me explain how this works. The tent doesn't add any heat, right? But it traps in heat. All that that insulation does is hold in heat. So if there's one body, one person inside of that tent, it holds in a little bit of heat. If there's two bodies inside of that tent, it holds in double the heat. Another body, additional heat, and so on. You know, with that being the case, I don't know. I'm not sure how practical it is because with Susan and I inside of that tent, we got roughly 10 degrees of warmth compared to the outside temperature. In my opinion, I cannot say that that tent is worth 10 degrees. I just can't. It, it's way too expensive. It's way too big for 10 degrees. Now, I did contact the company in regards to my findings with my testing, the 10 degrees for two people. And they pointed me to a video that they had done, some testing. And essentially what they were doing was testing their tent from... 12:30 p.m. till 12:30 a.m. that night. So I watched this video and there were a number of things that I did not like. First off, they had a number of different tents set up with the Krua tent. And one thing that I noticed was that they have electrical heaters inside of each of each one of these tents. But they had the heater and the location of the thermometer in each tent in different places. And so for the Karua tent, I noticed that the thermometer was actually right below the heater. So it looked like it was closer to the heater than with the other tents. The thermometers and the other tents were really far away from the heaters. The testing started at 12.30 p.m. and the outside temperature was 40 degrees and it was 45 degrees inside of that tent. Five hours later, the tent temperature was 51 degrees and it was 28 degrees outside. At 12.30, the tent temperature was 58.6 degrees and the temperature outside was 40 degrees. Now, did you guys catch that? So it went from 45 degrees outside to 28 degrees to 40 degrees outside. Something is wrong with their measurements. And I asked them about this and I really didn't get a good response. So I'm not really sure what all of that was about, but if you're going to test out a product like that, it has to be very, very clear what the findings are. And everything has to be the same sort of setup. You can't have the heater and the thermostat side by side for one tent and then with the next tent have the thermometer and the heater far apart, right? So that was interesting nonetheless, right? I also um, asked them about snow loading capabilities and they pointed me to another video. And that video had the tent out in the snow, but underneath a tree. And they stated that there essentially five inches of snow had fallen and that they had gone ahead and shook it all off onto the ground. I, I told them that I did not see five inches of snow in that video. Definitely not on the ground. And then why on earth did they put that tent underneath this gigantic tree? No matter what, five inches of snow did not land on that tent. So that, those are my observations. I pointed them out. In the end, they are definitely making an effort to address the issues that Susan and I had with that tent. We will not be doing a preview of that tent because a new version of it is coming out so soon. I believe they said July, something like that. 
So with that being said, I'm not going to waste your time with a video on it. I'm not going to waste my time either. Hopefully, Kuro will put the new version of that tent in my hands so I could show it off to you all. Now, I can tell you this much, folks. Krua has allowed me to see some prototypes of some tents that are coming up in the future. And I can tell you that they are awesome. They are awesome. I cannot give anything away about them, but the designs are truly unique. And there is a feature to at least one of those tents, which a lot of people will really, really like. I get asked about this feature all the time. Like I said, I cannot mention, I cannot say anything about this because it's a prototype. They were talking to me in a confident sort of way, so I'm not going to mention it. All I'm going to say is that those designs are cool. Very, very cool. Michael says, being in the UK, we really don't have to worry about anything biting us. Do you ever have to worry about getting bit by a snake or spider on your hikes or when you're sleeping? And also, what is your plan of action if you are to be bit? You know, if you get bit by a snake, go to the hospital. As simple as that. Go to the hospital. That's the plan. You, you don't suck it out. You don't use any tools, cutting this and whatever. None of that stuff works. Go to the hospital. That's my advice. If you get bit by any type of snake, if you're not sure what it is, go to the hospital. Even if you're out in the middle of nowhere. If I was hiking along, I get bit, I'm turning around, I'm gonna do my best to get back to the car. That's all that you can do. I mean, there's times when I go hiking and I'm in such a remote area. If I was to get bit, who knows what would happen, right? But that's the name of the game. That's the risk that you take to go explore in the wilderness. I know here in Western North Carolina, the amount of snake bites that have been reported already is very, very high. I think already just in this spring, it's more than like the last couple of years combined. And that's because we did not have a cold winter. Uh, it's been a very warm spring. Snakes are out. Things are hatching. There's lots of snakes. So just pay attention. Watch where you're sticking your hands. When you're walking, look at the trail. You know, just listen to the snake. Don't mess with them. Walk around them. Give them their space. And of course, like I said before, if you get bit, you turn around. You head to the hospital, if at all possible. Vadimir has a pretty good question here. What are your future plans for the Outdoor Gear Review? And do you have anything hidden up your sleeve? And yes, I do. Lots of plans for the Outdoor Gear Review. Um, as you guys have seen already, lots and lots of adventure this year. We have the road trips, we have the day hikes, the overnight trips. We're going to be traveling. I'm making a strong focus on filming lots and lots of adventure. Uh, at least one overnight adventure per month. Uh, so with some day hikes and other stuff thrown in in the mix. When it comes to gear, I I'm really, really focusing on the big items. Backpacks, tents, sleeping bags, sleeping pads, stoves. You know, when it comes to backpacking gear, there's so little information out on the internet. Even to this day, so little information. These backpacking companies, you know, take Big Agnes for an example. They have a ton of different tents, but if you go looking for a video about them, you'll find very little information. Um, so it's, I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to work with these companies. I'm trying to get these products in so I can show them off. So, you know, if you guys have some questions about the Slater Ultralight 2 Plus tent, you can go online and you can find a video about it. Yeah, the same goes for like, you know, four season tents, such as the Black Diamond Eldorado. I know that some people got upset with that video when I showed off a four season tent. I believe the price is like $700 for that tent. Some people really get bent out of shape when it comes to cost. But the thing is, you have to remember what it is. It's a true four season tent. That's an expedition grade tent. And that's how I showed it off. There's no reason for anybody to get upset about that because if you don't need an expedition grade tent, why are you getting upset about the price? So anyway, yeah, I'm trying to cover a wide range of products, tents. I'm doing inexpensive tents. I'm doing expensive tents. You know, the entire range, three season, four season, three plus season, and so on, all over the place. I will be starting up a new series here where we take a look at very inexpensive gear, very inexpensive products, and that includes backpacks, tents, sleeping bags, sleeping pads, and so on. Without a doubt, there's a market for very inexpensive, very cheap gear. You guys wanna see that stuff, some of you do. So I'm going to show it to you all. So we will take these cheap products and review them. We'll see how good they are for the price. Okay, so I have a question here that's a pretty common question. And this comes from Joe. He asks, 
if there are any military surplus gear reviews coming up. I'm currently working with a number of different providers so I can get some gear in. Um, with the channel here already, I've covered a lot. <laughs> I've covered a lot of gear. Lots of gear coming up, lots of military surplus stuff, hopefully soon, right? Hey, all right. I wanna take one second here to interrupt this video to do a Patreon shout out to Siren15. Thank you very much for your support of the channel. Thank you, Siren15. You are appreciated. Here's a question from Adam. Any suggestions for staying cool in the summertime? Well, for one thing, do not wear dark colored clothing such as this right here. Anytime I'm in the sun, I start sweating because it just soaks up the heat. Make sure to wear white, very light colored clothing. Stay away from cotton. Of course, that's just bad news in general. Everybody knows that's bad. You want breathable materials. You want materials that wick away moisture and that are also breathable. Polyester, this works very, very well. You guys have seen me wear these shirts forever and these are Old Navy Active Tees. When it comes to the material for your pants, go as light and airy as possible. Do not wear very, very tight clothing. You want some air, you want some room, you want to breathe, right? They do make nylon pants. Uh, for hiking and so on. I like convertible pants. That way you can unzip for the daytime while you're hiking around and at nighttime when it's cooling down, it's getting buggy, you can zip back up. Stay hydrated. Wear a hat. Wear sunscreen. Drink lots of fluids. That sort of stuff. You can of course carry a bandana with you. Keep it wet. Keep it around your neck, around your arteries here. That will keep you very, very cool. It really will. Yeah, right there. Some good examples. Hope that helps, buddy. Okay, so let's just move to the last question here, and this one comes from John. And he wants to know, do I carry a tourniquet and practice using it? No, I do not. All right, folks, with that being said, it is time to end this video. So until next time, everybody, take care, strength and honor, be well.